hospitalization, Dr. Laura Jean Edmonds. Uh, her speech in 2017 ISTC conference inspired us to begin with this debate. Dr. Edmonds, would you like to say a few words, please? Yes, thank you. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. Just thrilled to be part of this year's debate and knowing that in as we move forward, you are the generation that are going to lead in terms of influencing the policy on space development and the implications for Earth. So we're just thrilled to have such bright minds to be part of this debate and lead the way in terms of our next frontier in space. Thank you and best wishes for a great uh, cooperation. Thank you, Dr. Edmonds. Our host today is Francis Gellutri, who will be managing the technical aspects of a match. Our judges are Jim Plasco and Kurt Fifilski. Jim Plasco is president of the Chicago Society of, for, for Space Studies and volunteers as a NASA JPL Solar System Ambassador. He, he is a former president of the Northern Illinois Space Advocacy, a vice president and director of both the National Space Society and the Planetary Studies Foundation. Kurt Fifilski is the assistant director of debate at the University of Michigan and a PhD candidate in comparative public policy at Wayne State University. And I am the timekeeper and facilitator for room one and my name is Savik Mukherjee. I would like to read the following statement to you. The winning team is chosen based on their skill and effort, not on any preset NSS position. NSS clearly believes that humanity should continue to explore, develop and settle space. However, NSS also believes that open, honest debate will facilitate that idea. It is important that space advocates understand and be able to express the anti-space case. No statement by any debater or coach is an official position of NSS. Let's meet our debaters today. Team Titan, please give us your name, home country, and ethnicity. Hi, I'm Robert. I'm from Romania. Hello, my name is Andrea. I'm from Romania as well. Um, I'm Benjamin Purvis. I am from the USA. I'm Vishrut from India. Thank you, Team Titan. Team Energy, please give us your name, your home country, and ethnicity. My name I'm is Mara and I'm from Romania. I'm Pranil and I'm from India. Thank you, Team Energy. If anyone has a question, please raise your hand in your excuse participant me, icon. Excuse me, Sivak, I, I had muted people and uh, so we have a couple oh, more. Sorry, I, I was muted. I couldn't quite introduce myself. I introduced myself, but I was muted. <laughs> sorry. Uh, my name is uh, Mattia Martiali. I am from Romania. I'm half Romanian and half Italian. And Vishru. Thank you, Team Energy. If anyone has a question, please raise your hand in your participant's icon. Please mute your mic unless you are speaking and only the presenting team and judges should turn on their videos unless directed by the moderator. Here is the format for, today's, uh, for our today's debate. Each member of Team Titan will speak for two minutes, taking the affirmative position. I let the speaker know when two minutes is reached. When the affirmative eight minutes are completed, Team Energy each speaking for two minutes and will give their negative argument. After hearing their arguments, our host will open breakouts for five minute conversations for team to prepare the summary and judges to confer. The breakouts will close and the affirmative side with only one person from Team Titan now presenting their three minute summary. I'll indicate when a time limit has expired. Finally, one person from Team, uh, from team Energy negative side will, will present their three minute summary and I'll indicate the time limit if needed. If there is time, the judges may ask a question to the teams. The judges will also use their breakout to discuss their findings and determine the match winner. After five minutes, judges will return to the common Zoom room to give the decision and feedback, should time allow. We have a hard debate session stop at 9.15 a.m. CDT for this room. All right. Uh, excuse, me. I, excuse me, I am hearing some feedback and I believe it might be from your mobile, um, Subek. I don't know if you can move it to another room. Absolutely, I can do that. Okay, we'll give you a moment to do that. Yes, thank you. Yeah, 
Uh, are you still getting any feedback? Yes, we are. Then it might not be my phone. Uh, would you mute, please? Yeah, sure. Okay. Come up. It is your phone. Or it is yours. I, I, uh, hang on. I don't hear it now. So let's continue. Sit back. See, he's going to move it over. Okay. All good. Thank you. Okay. All right, Ms. Delutri. Do we have only the judges and the affirmative team with live videos and mics? We need to bring down the mics except for um, team, um, team energy, right? So I'm sorry, bring down, uh, turn off your mics and your video, unless you are team Titan and the judges. All right, thank you. Thank you. Let's get started. We'll hear from the first speaker from team Titan representing the affirmative position for resolution A. Money spent on space exploration is not justified when there are so many problems here on Earth that we need to solve first. Team Titan, your first speaker may begin now. Hello, I am Robert, the first speaker for the affirmative side. First of all, I would uh, like to make sure that everybody understands what this debate is about. So this debate is uh, about whether the problems here on Earth are more urgent than going into outer space because spending money for space exploration is quite a statement to make because it's expensive. We all know that space is really expensive and space exploration as well. And uh, there are a lot of problems here on Earth that we feel need to be taken care of first. First of all, think about how uh, 3,700,000 people starved to death just this year, according to the worldcounts.com. In every single country, there are people who live in poverty, misery <coughs> and hunger. So why not help them? Why not make universalization a real thing and help people from all over the world live better instead of spending $22 billion every single year for space exploration, which for all we know could lead us to nothing really big because I mean, we, we want to discover what's the, on the dark side of the moon. It may be nothing relevant and people are dying today as we speak and we just want to go to space to explore it. I feel like there are a lot of problems here that need to be taken care of first. Why should we go to outer space when our people are dying? Just think about it. I mean, everybody says that uh, our planet's resources are finite, but they're not done yet. We still have them. People are dying right now. So this is the more urgent matter. Also, problems here on Earth have, have reached a critical point. There haven't been this many deaths like 20 years ago. Now it's worse. And I feel like we should, we should take a moment to think about how, how urgent this is, how critical. I mean, we can't just let people die when we can do something about it. Think about how many people we can feed with $22 billion. I mean, we would reduce the uh, victims of starve by at least 75%. Isn't it? more important than Thank just you, going to the time is up. Maybe Thank hear you. from speaker two now. Okay, so my argument is going to be about cost and why we should prioritize our needs first. In the beginning, I'd like to start with a little bit of clarification. As Robert said before, we aren't against space exploration and we don't deny its benefits. Satellite technology, for example, has had a beneficial impact on our world. However, there is a huge difference between launching a satellite into space orbit and exploring outer space. So we totally support inspiration, innovation, and culture, but we, be we strongly believe that first, we must invest our money in solving our problems because exploring outer space has a huge cost. For example, the cost of Apollo, Apollo program was estimated to the uh, US Congress as being $25.4 billion. Another example, the total cost of space shuttle program was $196 billion. You might say that we are more advanced now and we have different technologies, but the Mars One mission budget is over $6 billion. So even as technology advances, the cost of exploring space are far from cheap. Now, 
we don't have to rush. We don't have to go to Mars now if we aren't ready yet because we're gonna risk to transform Mars into another damaged Earth. Now imagine only if we would have spent tiny time, money and effort investing in uh, technologies such as hydrogen energy or tidal turbines or uh, micro steering engines. Where would we be by now? Probably in a better position to explore space with better, cheaper and more reliable resources. Now, again, we don't say that we shouldn't go to space at all. We just say that we have to do that in a proper, sustainable way, because if we're gonna rush the process, we're gonna destroy the concept of universalization, because not everyone could be involved in and be part of this movement. For example, the third world countries uh, face problem like poverty or lack of education, and they couldn't be part of this. So instead of destroying the, uh, the concept of universalization, first let's heal our world, and after that we will we'll be proud to transform outer space into another earth. Thank you. Thank you, speaker two. Maybe hear from speaker three now. Did you know every 10 seconds a child dies of hunger? This is just one example of a problem here on Earth. Today, my two points to address this problem include, this problem can't be solved using space and there's too much to worry about with going to space. To address my first reason why we should not go to space at this moment in time is because these problems can't be solved in space. According to Business Insider, poverty is the fourth biggest problem on Earth. That is a huge deal. I feel that if we're going to go to space, we need to solve these problems first and many more. Think of poverty and hunger as a poison, as a disease, and like a cancer. It is something that is holding on to us and it won't let go until we treat it. Until we treat and solve this problem and any more, we will not be able to go to space. For this reason, affirm. To address my last and final reason, there's too much to worry about with going to space. According to nasa.gov, radiation, isolation, confinement, distance from Earth, lack of gravity, hostility, and other objects such as meteors, comets, and asteroids, which are also known as extinction level events, are problems that we need to worry about when going to space. I feel that if we need to try and go to space fast, we will hurt the way we universalize space as a whole. In conclusion, I think that we should not go to space right now because it is too dangerous and risky with problems that we need to solve here on Earth, such as poverty, hunger, and many more. And it is too dangerous to go to space because of all the problems, such as radiation, isolation, etc. If we combine these two problems together, this will be an overload on us and we will not be able to solve all of these at once. My team and I feel that we should wait until we solve these problems first before we universalize space and we go to space for deep space exploration. Thank you. Thank you, speaker three. Maybe hear from speaker four now. Every year, NASA spends $22.6 billion for space exploration. This is a huge amount. If we spend this amount for the problems which we are facing on Earth, then we can lead a joyful life. We need some basic comforts for living like food, shelter, energy, and education. If you check in reality, are we perfect in these sectors? Absolutely no. The latest available estimates indicate that about 811 million people in the world were undernourished in 2018. One in nine people do not get enough food to be healthy and lead an active life. UN government has been trying to solve some major problems among those, but still it couldn't focus on some more other places who lag very behind. If the collapse of universalization is a recurrent theme, then we should be looking for ways of managing the planet's resources in order to make how we live sustainable. The way to do that is not going, is not to go charging off into space or wasting money or wasting unbe unbelievable quantities of money in pursuit of some chimera that we might one in day come back with some valuable mineral. Science should be devoting the sorts of sums of money that is pumping into space to working out how to manage the climate here on Earth. There has been research going on for 65 years into climatic management. Chinese and Russians know how to make it rain when they want it to rain. They are very switched into this. Chinese used to prevent rain during the opening and closing ceremonies of Beijing Olympics and it never rains on the Victory Day Parade in Russia. 
So the technology for managing the weather is in place. And I think we should devote massive resources to developing that technology and taking it from the military into the civilian world. So me and my team strongly believe that instead of investing that huge amount of money on space exploration, maybe we could sort out the problems which we are facing on Earth because we live here for now. Thank you, and speaker. when we Both start... Thank you, Team Titan. Now it's time to hear from Team Energy. Speaker one from Team Energy, your time starts now. It before I before you start timing me, I want to clarify the for the judges that due to circumstances that are beyond our control, uh, we unfortunately have one less team member. So I'm going to be speaker one and speaker two. And for timing purposes, I will stop between the two speeches. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Your time starts now. Everyone here today is fortunate. Why? Uh, we do not personally face the struggles experienced by many people around the world. We benefit from technological advancements that didn't even exist a few de decades ago. Yet one truth still remains. Around the world, there are major issues that need and deserve our attention. Many places go without access to clean water. Many people are unsure if the food will be available for their next meals. Many children are growing up with the day of tomorrow being of hope rather than a promise. And now COVID-19 shows us the importance of working together to literally save the human race. Team Titan would like us to believe that Resolution A is the best course of action. We will share the reasons why we stand in the negation of this resolution. Money spent on space exploration is in fact justified because space exploration has been providing the solutions to some of the biggest challenges here on Earth. Globalization may have served the pur its purpose, yet universalization is key as we move forward to the next phase of human development. To paraphrase NSS board member Dr. L.J. Edmonds, universalization means embracing interplanetary relations and more aggressively exploitation of opportunities beyond the confines of Earth. It requires a unified focus on social, technological, economic, and cultural challenges with opportunities extending into our solar system, our galaxy, and beyond. Universalization considers Earth's place in the broader universe as well as the sustainability of our species. Over the next few minutes, we'll, it will become clear why we must continue space exploration full force. Implementing universalization is imperative for efforts in outer space as well as for a better existence right here on Earth. We will explain how space exploration is solving many of our current problems, why it will ensure the longevity of our species, and why space exploration is a key component for surviving the next global crisis. Because without solutions that funding space exploration provides, we may not make it to the next level of human existence. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker 1. Speaker 2, your time starts now. First of all, let's think about why are we here? How was this debate even possible during the situation we're experiencing around the world? The truth is that the reason why we're, he we're able to debate this resolution now and why we're able to be here together to find solutions to problems here on Earth is space exploration. Look at all that space exploration has made possible. Localization through satellites, streaming media, package delivery services which rely on satellites like Amazon, 3D technology, iCloud. These have all become essential parts of our lives, yet without space exploration, they would not exist. Space exploration has been a game changer and that led us to further development as a species. Thinking about life in the status quo, technology brings people together. Let's take, for example, the well-known Google Earth. It's an incredible example of what can be created using space exploration when people come together with a unified mindset. That's a key component when we're, discuss when we're talking about universalization. And as Dr. L.J. Edmonds mentioned in the Spun Debates panel discussion, it takes all of us to solve problems and to create new opportunities for all of humanity to succeed and thrive. Another relevant example is the advent of streaming media apps like Zoom, the one we're using for this debate, keeping people everywhere connected, even during the coronavirus crisis. In fact, according to NBCNews.com, it's the most widely used app during this pandemic. Again, not possible without the efforts of space exploration. You know, the irony is that we're able to better address from space the problems that we have here on Earth. So when we think of money spent on space exploration, let's not think of this as a problem. Let's think of this as a solution. 
space exploration can be called the key to universalization and can solve most of the problems that we ha we're facing right now, mostly because it brings all of us together. It keeps us connected. And that's what we need to ascend us to the next level, universalization. Now, Preneel will make the point regarding longevity of our species. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. Now it's time for speaker three. Your time starts now. Thank you, Mara. The era of space exploration began with Spanning One in 1957. And after that, there's no turning back. Mara is correct. Space exploration has solved many problems, tying into my point that is ensuring the longevity of human race. Yet, space exploration still gets a question mark because most people do not understand its value. That is why education must be a component of our efforts moving forward. People everywhere need to understand that with our uh, efforts in space, we'll see the end of human race. The main motto of NASA is to provide benefit for all. Tying into the concept of universalization, working together now with cooperation and not just competition will mean we'll survive and thrive into the future. Space exploration has also led to creation of new medical technology, increasing the overall life expectancy of humans. According to NASA or GV, more than 44,000 lives have been saved using this technology. Some of them include radiation therapy for cancer patients, metabolism rate sensors, CAT scans, and air refrigerator for vaccines. Now, coronavirus is quickly taking human lives. Without a vaccine and diagnosing technology, it would wipe out humanity just within a few years. Thankfully, the first diagnosing technology was invented by Ben and his team, who are part of NASA's astrobiology team. The team gathered two kits, which is now collectively known as SARS-CoV-19. The first is based on an isothermal amplification platform, while the second uses polymerase chain reactions. Without this kit, we would not be able to diagnose patients. Thus, continuation of space exploration means continuation of our own species. One main problem on Earth, which is taking many lives, is hunger. According to World Hunger Statistics from World Health Organization, more than 820 million people are hungry globally. But this is not only because of poverty, it is also because of inefficient methods of farming. And again, space exploration has led to an efficient food production and distribution, providing farmers with remote sensing satellites and weather predicting technology, as pointed out by Carlton Johnson, chair of NSS Board of Governors during the Spun Debate discussion panel. Space exploration combined with sp space education and a universalization mindset will clearly ensure the longevity of human race. Next, we are going to have Matia, who is going to tie everything together and explain a valuable point regarding human survival on Earth and beyond. Thank you, Speaker 3. Speaker 4, your time starts now. Thank you, Perennial. This resolution opens the door for important conversations about funding for space exploration, which helps us survive and also thrive here on Earth. We must adopt the universalization mindset to offset the negative impact of problems like hunger, pollution, homelessness, and now a worldwide pandemic. And we need to consider external factors that could render us extinct or even destroy our planet. This leads to our final point, the impact of great filters. According to Italian physician Enrico Fermi, great filters are one or more hurdles that can keep civilization from advancing to the next stage, either self-made or environmentally inflicted. Historical examples include the Black Plague or the discovery of nuclear technology. Great filters are most likely why we haven't found life outside our planet, as civilizations eventually wipe themselves out. As Perniel explained, we need to make sure we do not become the next dinosaurs. And COVID-19 is proof we're not in the clear yet. In addition, external factors beyond our control come into play. Studies from the B612 Foundation show a 100% chance of an asteroid collision. Therefore, the, questions, the question of humans leaving the Earth is not if, but when. Again, thanks to space exploration, we have the technology to destroy asteroids far away from Earth, but we still need a plan B, another home when the next great filter comes along. Our poor planet cannot handle our activity for much longer. We must continue space exploration full force to help humanity achieve its next stage of universalization, to discover new technologies, to maintain our current ones so we can survive and inhabit, yet not harm, other planets in the universe. Continued focus on space exploration spending with public awareness programs and worldwide education at the forefront is important, but cutting funding to try to solve our short-term problems would hinder our ability to reach our long-term goals. With coronavirus rampant worldwide, we see how fragile human existence can be. As such, we should continue proper funding for space exploration, education, and universalization in order to raise the chance of tomorrow being a shining promise rather than just a glimmer of hope. Thank you. Thank you, Team Energy. Now uh, we'll now ask Ms. Delutri to open the breakout for five minutes to prepare team summaries and judge to confer. Please join breakout rooms.
Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a nice time at the debate. Um, I think if everyone could open up their uh, mics and videos. We have a little bit of time. And so we thought we'd have a little bit of a discussion here until our friends come back. Uh, Coach Barack, it's good to see that you've been able to join us. Yeah, nice to see you again. Uh, and Barack, uh, um, Jonathan, you are in Seoul still? Still in Seoul, yes. Seoul, Korea. So it's wonderful that you're here with us today. Um, Thank you. Suvek. Well, um, so I hope you're all having a nice experience here. And it's very nice to see all of you have found time to join us. Uh, it, being it, uh, it being an international debate competition, it's very hard to, f hard to find the right time zones where everybody can meet and discuss together. And um, talking about this debate, this debate idea had started almost three years back in St. Louis from National Space Society's ISTC conference. It was a result of a presentation by Dr. L.J. Edmonds on the universalization concept. And she stated that this century is not going to be remembered by globalization, but by one world in the universe. Universalization's central theme is whether or not cooperation is our, is our only way to sustain humanity in this construct. And these words are the ones which have motivated us and led us to this moment. I wanted to ask um, uh, LJ, Dr. Edmonds, uh, uh, did you think this is where we would be at this point, three, to, three years later? You mean in terms of the debate? I, I think, I think that level. this is probably the most sophisticated debate. I think this is one of the most sophisticated debates that we're seeing in the universe today. Um, I'm really impressed by the, the cooperation, the sense of mutual respect, um, the inclusive conversation that's going on between the debaters. And I think this speaks volumes about our future in terms of how our colleagues are gonna negotiate very complex questions facing us in space and in Earth. So yeah, I am really impressed and deeply touched by Francis and our colleagues, Suvik and Aperva and all our members at NSS who have supported this major endeavor. It is really quite something. It's been uh, fascinating to see where we would go and also the, um, the interest of the students. Um, uh, we, we have made a couple of videos that are online about universalization. Um, they hopefully will be on the NSS YouTube um, channel pretty soon. Uh, but I th there are some uh, great quotes that uh, uh, debaters came, came up with. Subek, do you have those quotes handy, handy? Yes, I have them right now. So some of the words from our debaters, that is the act of all the nations on earth, all the people coming together to tackle the problems that affect us all. Universalization seeks past boundaries of our countries and pushes us, not, pushes us to work together towards the greater goal. And thus from these ideas, these fun debates was born. And we're really happy that our debaters are taking in, taking in the concept, spreading it around. And um, we can hope that in the near future, the concept is applied throughout the world. Those are pretty heady um, comments that, that came from students that were 13, 14, 15 years old. <laughs> so that's, um, that's been what's been interesting is the conversations. Coach Jackie, you've had um, lots of conversations. Uh, you've met daily for quite some time. Was there any part of this that uh, was kind of surprising for you or exciting? <laughs> um, yes, I'd say Parts of it were both um, surprising how these kids, um, we know, we know the generation's resilient and, and we know they're bright lights. But surprising and fascinating to me. Uh -oh. um, surprising and fascinating to me that these children from all different walks of life and different cultures could so easily blend together for this unified goal of, of contributing to this effort to educate people about space education. And so it's been very gratifying for me, very humbling. Co Coach Barack, Jonathan, um, you know, you had to work with many different uh, uh, difficulties, time zone, many times <laughs> you were a day ahead of other people. Um, <laughs> do you have something that uh, 
came, comes to your mind about this experience? We have about 30 seconds before students join us. Um, I mean, I think obviously we're, we're happy to celebrate that we can compete and cooperate so much together, especially cooperate. Um, I think even on top of that, we can also celebrate the technological aspect and how sometimes technology doesn't work the way you expect, but while you're cooperating with others, you tend to find a back door or you find a new way to make the technology work in a new way that allows you to succeed. I think there's certainly been a, a learning curve uh, through this uh, virtual experience that COVID has uh, given us this opportunity to work through here. So um, I believe we have everyone back. Yeah, I think that's everything. Welcome back, everybody. Now it's time for Team Titan, representing the uh, affirmative position, to give their three minute summary. Your time starts now. Hello, I'm Robert. Uh, me, uh, I will give. Moment. Excuse me, just a moment. Um, so everyone except for Team Titan should be up, except the judges and Team Titan should have their video up. Thank you. I'm so sorry to um, interrupt you there. Sure, no problem. Thank you. Okay, so I'm Robert. I will give the concluding speech for the affirmative side. Uh, the con side said that we should think about technology and, and universalization when only 52.4% of the people on the planet have access to internet. Where's the universalization here? Nearly half the people have access to technology. When uh, people in Africa starve to death and we here uh, just stay on Instagram and WhatsApp, where's the universalization? Don't you think universalization means that we should uh, make the third world countries live in our conditions, why don't they deserve it? Just because they live there? No, we should focus on helping them and making them uh, live as we do, not starve to death. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Also, I feel like uh, we don't, we're not against space exploration. I don't want you to uh, have that impression because we're not against the site, the, sorry, the uh, resolution says that uh, money spent on space, on space exploration is not justified when there are so many problems here on Earth. Justified, not that it's not useful, not that it doesn't help us, that it's not justified. And I feel like they, the concept also said about uh, COVID-19. I mean, you're telling me that we should go into outer space instead of solving the health issues that are in the world right now. We can, we can merely leave the house and we should go into outer space. I don't get that. I feel like we should think about it with 22 billion dollars spent every year on space exploration, think about how many medical achievements we can reach, how much faster we can find a cure possibly for COVID-19. So I feel like that wasn't a strong argument at all. I strongly believe that uh, the problems on Earth are more important than space exploration. Sure, we can go into outer space, but only once universalization and health issues and medical advancement and technology is available to everyone, and we don't have these problems here on Earth with people starving to death, living in misery, in poverty, where they can't, they can't uh, afford to buy food. I mean, where is the universalization there when you go into outer space spending $22 billion and the guys in Africa starve to death? We can go to space once we solve all of the problems on Earth. Then, sure, I, we are really pro to going to outer space, but there are more urgent things problems here on earth and they are critical and COVID-19 is already influencing all of our lives in a negative way. Don't you want to get rid of this and so we can go with your friends outside? No, we want to go into outer space right now. I feel like that's not the right, the right thing to do. We should focus on what we have to do here, then go into outer space. Thank you. Thank you, Team Titan. Now it's time for Team Energy, representing the negative position, to give their three minute summary. Team uh, Energy, your time starts now. Today, we have shown why it is imperative to stand in negation and continue space exploration full force. We explained how it is making a big difference in improving the challenges of our world, why it is key and ensuring the longevity of our species and how space research is making people uh, and space education is a key component in exploration effort. The lack of knowledge about space research is making people think that space exploration is just a waste of money. So as you can see, space is not just a waste of money, especially considering that now is one of the most crucial times to allow the space program to continue the work it has been doing. The work is this close 
to putting aside these differences and working together for universalization. Firstly, I would like to uh, tie to the point of perennial in regards to hunger and the fact that currently hunger is not caused by not enough resources being poured into it or there not being enough farmland, but rather I would like to point out that currently it is happening because of inefficient farming. And efficient farming is constantly being developed by NASA for space exploration in order to resist the harshest solution. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like, I'd next I want to tie back to the argument of great filters and the fact that uh, one of the speakers mentioned that it is not currently urgent to find another place to thrive in. We disagree. We believe that it is not only urgent, but it is also needed to find another place. As I said, Earth cannot handle our activity for much longer. I believe that uh, cutting funding for short-term pr problems, such as poverty, hunger, and everything, which could all be solved if we could just reach universalization. And the first step towards universalization is space exploration. Cutting funding for those short-term problems will not let us reach our long-term goals. Uh, I would also like to mention that speaker one said that space exploration will lead to nothing big, whereas speaker two says they're not opposing space exploration. Uh, I'd also like to mention that here and there, some of um, the factual data, we believe it was incorrect, and uh, some of the claims were sourceless. Also, there is kind of a sense of urgency currently with COVID-19, currently wrecking havoc amongst the communities. Remember, the, fa the first kit for diagnosing COVID-19 was developed by NASA. Therefore, space exploration is not only helping all of our other problems, it is also helping with the current problem of the pandemic. As you've seen with the previous arguments, we must continue to put money into space exploration. We're also not saying that space exploration takes priority over these problems. We're saying that right now, these problems are being solved by space exploration while we're getting closer to the goal. Now, a non-discriminating, life-threatening virus has run rampant around the world, changing life as we know it, and challenging us in ways we may have not thought possible just a few months ago. COVID-19 has left no person immune and has shown us that despite distance, we are in fact all connected. Thank you. Thank you, Team Energy. That was wonderful. Now, we'll, we'll now ask Ms. Jellitri to open the breakout for five minutes to, uh, for judges to confer. But before that, as we have some time on our hand, I would like to ask the judges if they would like to ask any questions to the teams. I'm fine, thank you. I'm also okay, thank you. Thank you, judges. So as there are no questions, I would request uh, Ms. Jalutri to open breakout room for five minutes for judges to confirm and come back with the results. Thank you. I think we have our judges in their breakout room. And I have um, all of our uh, debaters are here. If you'll uh, turn up your videos. Very good. Wow, I uh, am very impressed with what you've done. Um, I hope you're feeling a bit of sense of relief and I'm sure you're anxious to hear the, um, the decision. Um, we have, uh, we thought it would be great to maybe just have a little bit of a time to, to have a, a, a little bit of a chat. Sivak? Yeah. So I hope uh, this debate experience has been great for you. And uh, we would like to ask uh, anyone from any team that how did they, how, how have they felt the journey has been from here, right? Starting from November registration to all the way to the final debate. So would anybody like to speak anything? This has been a very um, a long road. Uh, some of you started applying back in November. Uh, some of you, uh, when I saw the applications come in, I saw that you returned to your uh, application several times. So you were trying to, I think, do your best and, and consider some of the questions we had there. There were some marvelous questions that were there. Um, Andrea, when you think of back in November, when you first started your application process, 
And then here you are seated here today and you're talking to people across the world. You're not in Dallas as has been planned. Um, can you tell us uh, just how you're feeling about being in today's space, what you're doing today versus to be in, in Dallas with a live debate? Well, it was a huge opportunity, and I think it was a huge opportunity for every uh, each of us. But I remember when I first applied and I was supposed to make the video, it was, I was so nervous and I didn't know what to say. And I filmed it like thousands of times and I didn't like my shirt. So my friend gave me her shirt and we changed like three outfits. So uh, yes, it, it was a very nice experience and we were all very nervous. And now that I'm here, it's a little bit, I'm unbelievable. Like I'm a little bit shaking now, but uh, it, was, it was a great experience and uh, I really love it. And I hope I can be part of it next year, maybe live, but let's see what future brings us. I'd like to ask a question of Ben. Um, ben, um, in, uh, you are in Florida in the US and uh, as well as Andrew. And um, you have students who are in your school um, who have um, multi-national uh, parents, uh, et cetera. But in this forum, you're actually talking with people across the world and um, people who are living in, in their cultures. Uh, so I want to ask Ben, um, what has been your impression of moving from kind of a, a US view to a more worldly view? Well, I thought it's been pretty cool because I just figured out how your time zone works like last week. <laughs> um, but um, I've been trying to do as best as I can to figure out um, how this works. And I think it's pretty cool being able to talk with people from all around the world. I didn't even know Zoom was possible for the whole virtual school. I just knew there was computers and that was it. I've learned a lot of new things from COVID happening, and um, this was a great experience. Andrew, do you have anything to add? Um, well, most of my family lives in China, so I'm used to talking to people around the world. Mm -hmm. So we actually, we were supposed to go this summer, but we didn't get to because of obviously COVID. So um, yeah, it was a really fun experience. Great. Um, Vishruth, you are from India. And yeah. it seems like um, uh, India is about uh, 10 and a half hours ahead of US time, uh, depending upon where you are in the US. Uh, so sometimes were you getting up really early or staying up really late? No, 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 no. Actually, uh, in some way it uh, matches my time. It's okay. I, I do manage it. You managed it well? Yeah. Right. How about for you, Pranil? Did you have uh, with your with your time? I, I think you were up late a couple of times, weren't you? Yeah, almost yeah. every day from the uh, past 20 days. But it was the best time in my life because I was able to gain more knowledge, speak to many people from different countries, which might not be possible maybe. And uh, actually, I was a little uh, disappointed because I was not able to go to the ISDC conference because of this COVID-19. But this is an amazing platform. And it was like... Um, it is actually completely different from a live debate. You are, uh, you are somewhere else in this world, but you are all connected in the same time. And uh, working with other people is like understanding their uh, cultures there, learning different things. Uh, and I really had some fun with them. That is marvelous. I believe our judges will be joining us in just a moment. Great. Okay. Um, Sudek. Thank you, everyone. It's been wonderful listening uh, from all of you. I see the judges have returned and... Uh, we didn't have we any choice. Are, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have any choice. <laughs> I hope you had enough time. No. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you good? Can you proceed, do you think? Uh, we did come up with uh, a total score uh, but we really didn't have time to uh, converse back and forth uh, about the commendable aspects for each part 
of the debate or the weaknesses. Uh, Do you so. feel comfortable um, just speaking um, from from the hip here, just uh, kind of letting the teams know some feedback uh, that you could see or, uh, uh, you know, strengths and weaknesses? Are you okay to do that? I think we're a friendly group here and we want to know, right? We want to learn from our experience. Sure. Yep. Uh, I thought, okay, I have to give kudos to Mara because she was very uh, composed, uh, very good posture. So she projected a very good uh, positive appearance. And so I very much like that. So, and Thank I'll you. let Kurt uh, uh, continue. Uh, I I was really thrilled with this debate. Um, everybody seems to have invested a little bit of time um, into it. I think that for the affirmative team, it would probably be wise to moving forward to kind of synchronize what your your speeches are going to, to be, at least your, your constructives. Uh, there's quite a bit of overlap in some of the arguments that the speakers are making, uh, which prevents kind of getting at some of the strength of, of those positions. Um, same time, I think the neg when teams that are negative should uh, can use their constructive time to rebut some of the uh, affirmative positions uh, right from the get-go because you have eight minutes to listen and process information and kind of work some things in. Um, and I think that it would be helpful to kind of uh, point out that $22 billion is not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things to solve uh, all of the world's problems. Um, and that if we if we wait to solve those problems before we uh, work to explore space, we'll never get to space because the, some of them like poverty uh, and famine are insurmountable. Um, so uh, we could be putting the cart before the horse yeah. um, um, in some manners. I would just uh, for each team, uh, I would ask you to consider this uh, when it comes to the rebuttal portion of the debate, you really don't have any time to do any research uh, at all. And an effective rebuttal can be ve a very powerful tool. So perhaps as a part of researching for the next step forward uh, in the debates is to really think about what possible the uh, arguments the uh, other team may be making in support of their position and see what research you can do to find the uh, counters to that position so that you're really ready to go and it's less likely that the other team can take you by surprise uh, by presenting something that you hadn't anticipated. I, I think everybody was was fairly strong at speaking. Um, some people were uh, slightly more experienced, I would say, than than others. The one thing that I would recommend with debating on a platform like Zoom is to make sure that your eyes are pointed at your web camera uh, and not necessarily the screen uh, to give some emphasis of eye contact. Um, because if depending on where your camera's at, things can be a little bit different. Uh, another criteria that's on the judging card is hand gestures and stuff like that, which th are, are difficult to work into these conversations, but not entirely impossible. Um, so um, for the, the people who kind of stepped back into the room and gave a speech, I thought that they uh, had a little bit better ethos um, in, in that setup. Thank you, Anyone, uh, um, from uh, any debaters, do you have any questions uh, about uh, your particular way of doing things or what you saw was great that somebody did that you thought, oh boy, I should do that next time around? Did anybody see anything that was good? I noticed some I people thought to stand, some people chose to sit. The biggest thing is that we can hear you. That's important. I'm it sorry, like Coach Jackie, were you jumping in there? No, I think it was a student. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, I would like to give a shout out to Mattia. I feel like he's very convinced when he speaks. We're oh, having a little hard time hearing you, Robert. Again, please. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, I would like to give a shout out to Mattia because I feel like he's very convincing when he speaks. 
speaks is the nation and everything. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, we're ready for a decision. Drum roll. <laughs> But it was a challenge, um, and I hope I, let's see, the, we gave the, a slight edge to the team that took the negative position in the debate. So I, so which team was that again? Um, team Energy. Team Energy. Team energy. Or, or is that supposed to be Energia <laughs> from the uh, Russian rocket? Yeah, that's the one. Um, yeah, so we gave uh, a slight uh, scoring edge to uh, Team Energia, uh, and it, and it was tough uh, because of you know uh, the limited time for us to consider you know the arguments that both teams were making and try to, it was a lot of ground to cover from uh, all of today's debaters. So thank you very much. We're glad we could be part of such an experience. Let's have a, a unmute your mics, everybody. And let's have some applause for what's happened to you. <laughs> Oh, and, an and another piece of advice yeah. for debaters. Do not do like me and use a virtual background when you're doing your debate. Uh, and for Benjamin, uh, I'm, for me, it's very difficult for me to see you because you've got very bright sunlight coming through your window right over your shoulder. So uh, yeah, something to bear in mind that for you know next time or any other zoom calls you're on you might want to you know close down uh, on the curtains so so let's just um uh, make sure we know where everyone's going for um team inertia uh you will be going uh to the negative in room five, is that correct? Is everyone seeing that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And for Titan, you are going to go uh, to room six and you will be affirmative for res A. Energia, you will also be res A. Okay. Titan, is that correct? We'll go to uh, room six, I believe. Uh, yes, room 630. Okay, and um, uh, Energia, you will debate at 10 o'clock, so that room will open about, about 10 minutes before, and that will be today, correct? A question. Yes. Um, I thought that we were negative. Uh, you are negative. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. No, okay. I'm I sorry. was looking to make sure. No, you are negative. You are negative. Okay. Uh, and um, um, Titan will be affirmative right now titan you do not uh debate until tomorrow morning at eight o'clock cdt yes correct yes, and yes. you will be in room six tomorrow yes. okay what time? 8 a.m cdt the same time as today okay okay and you have your links right Yes. Uh, the document has your link, so you know how to get into that Zoom room? Yes, we have it. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you know where you're going, what time, and what you're going to be <laughs> <laughs> debating. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Sudek. Sudek, you want to continue? Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoy the remainder of your morning, your afternoon, or your evening. Thank you for participating in the May tournament of Spun Virtual Debates 2020. Please have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Thank you, and thank, thank you, you, Team Energia and Team thank Titan. You. It was a wonderful experience. Thank you all. Thank you, coaches. Thank you. Thank you, judges. Thank you all. Have a blessed day. <laughs>